guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. So we have another installment, another episode of my hits and shits. And in today's video, we are doing my April favorites and disappointments. So all of the products that I have just been absolutely loving for the last four, five, six weeks, I'm just obsessed with using every single day products that I really recommend and also some products that just... Oh, and I'm still really irked by this, like because I have got some products in my shits this month that people swear by, rave about, like received so much hype. And I just I'm so confused. I'm literally so confused. So stick to the end of the video to see that. But yeah, hits and shits, favorites and disappointments for April. I've got a really good mixture of body care, skincare and makeup. Let's do it, let's dive in. So if you're interested in seeing that, then please keep on watching. All right, so first up, I have a couple of body care products. You guys, this literally only just launched, I'm gonna say maybe a week ago. I am obsessed with it. This is the brand new Watermelon Glow Pink Dream Body Cream from Glow Recipe, and it is seriously heaven in a bottle. So this is a body moisturizer, and it is insanely, insanely delicious. Like, I just cannot tell you, like, oh, how amazing this smells. It's a really, really nice lightweight body moisturizer. I think I've spoken to you guys about this before, but I am very, very, very fussy when it comes to body moisturizer. Like, I hate any Anything that leaves a residue on my skin. I hate anything that leaves me feeling like greasy or sticky or tacky. <laughs> I'm kind of high maintenance when it comes to body moisturizers. And from the moment that I opened this, I just cannot believe how good it is. It smells like absolute heaven. Like obviously it's watermelon scented. If you've tried any of the other Glow Recipe watermelon scented products, you will know just how delicious this is. It's watermelon scented and it just, oh, it hydrates my skin so, so, so well. Leaves my skin like soft as silk, like it feels incredible, but without being sticky or heavy, it absorbs really, really quickly. I've just been loving it. I've just been slathering myself with it every single morning and I'm going to go through this entire bottle I'm sure in no time at all and I will be restocking because honestly this is my new favorite moisturizer ever it is just oh insane still honorable mention to the Coco and Eve one I'm still going really strong on this and adoring this and loving this and this smells amazing as well but like this oh, how does one choose <laughs> all right next up I've got my plastic free deodorant from Native this is making it into my favorites again I I still cannot get over how good this stuff is. I am still teamed up with Native. I am still partnered with them. I absolutely love, love, love and swear by their products. If you haven't seen any of my other videos and you haven't heard me talk about this product, basically Native is an aluminium free deodorant. It's paraben free and it's full of really, really amazing nourishing, hydrating ingredients that just feel incredible on the skin. It's got coconut oil in it. It's got shea butter in it, but it actually works. Like. I smell fresh as a daisy all day long when using this. It's incredible. It's so creamy. It's not sticky. It dries down immediately. And it's so, 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 so effective. Like I have tried quite a few aluminum free deodorants in my time. I made the switch. I'm going to say maybe was it almost two years ago now? And I was always like skeptical about it. I was always like, mm, if it doesn't have aluminum in it, like, is it really going to work? You guys know I work out heaps. You know, I run, I do weight training. I do this, I do that. And I need like a really, like I need my deodorant to work properly. Um, was very, very skeptical until I tried this one. Now you're probably familiar with me talking about the original native packaging, but the new plastic free packaging I am just loving. It's made from paperboard, so it's much more sustainable, it's much more eco-friendly. The plastic free one's really easy to use. You just slide the lid up, you push it up at the bottom and then you just go ahead and apply it. Um, and then pop the lid back on. They're also partnered with 1% for the planet. So 1% of the plastic free deodorant sales do go to environmental nonprofits, which is awesome. So they're just, they're doing awesome things. And like you guys, <sighs> Coconut and vanilla, still my favorite. Like, let me tell you, your armpits will smell like cocktails on the beach. Like literally that's the best way to describe it. It's absolutely delicious. Like I said, paraben free, sulfate free. So like I said, you guys, I've still got a code. Normally our three of the plastic free deodorants are $39. But if you use my code, you'll get them for 25% off. So you'll get them for $29. They do ship worldwide. Shipping in the US I think is free. There's heaps of scents. I know that I've already converted so many of you over to this. Um, You'll, you will honestly love it. Definitely recommend and still a favorite. All right, moving on from body care, I have some skincare to show you now. Now I did feature this product in a video that went up, I think maybe last week or the week before. 
This is literally a game changer in a bottle. So this is the Kate Somerville Exfoliate. I know, cute play on words. I'm I'm quite impressed with that myself. <laughs> this is their intensive exfoliating treatment and believe me when I say it is absolutely intensive. Like there really is no better way to describe it. You guys know how much I love a really, really good exfoliating moment. Like I've got enlarged pores, I've got texture, I've got oily skins, I've got breakouts, I've got blackheads. Pretty much everything that exfoliating is good for, I have on my face and I just love the way that my skin feels after using this. It's a funny green color and like I said, like it tingles, like it literally burns on the skin, but not in a bad way. Like don't think I mean like, oh, you know, your face is gonna melt off or you're gonna be left like red raw or anything. Not at all. This is a physical and chemical exfoliator. So there are acids in this to chemically exfoliate the skin, but then it's also got like a bit of texture to it. So basically you massage it into the skin for 30 seconds and then you leave it on the skin for two minutes and trust me it feels like kind of a long two minutes because the whole time you're like oh my face is tingling so much and like you can oh it just feels warm and just like you can feel it really really working and then you rinse it off honestly skin softer than ever brighter than ever smoother than ever it is just such an amazing two minute treatment that makes a huge difference to the skin it's always been known as like the hollywood two minute facial and i can totally see why because for me i get very very similar results to this that I do from going in and getting a facial in cell. And you know how you come out and you're just glowing and you're like so soft and amazing? This literally gives me the same results. I'm so impressed. I cannot believe it took me so long to discover it. I cannot believe it took me so long to start using it. This stuff is like next level, you guys. Really, really, really recommend. And then another skincare product here that I've been really, really enjoying is this eye cream from Biosense. So this is their Marine Algae Eye Cream. Um, basically, this one's supposed to visibly firm and instantly smooth. I can definitely say it does all those things. I've been using it for about four weeks now, and I am honestly just loving how easy this is to apply. It absorbs into the skin so quickly. It's a really, really nice, lightweight kind of formula. Um, you guys know that I hate eye creams that are very emollient, that are very heavy. Like, I really want something that'll just absorb so, so quickly that's not going to interfere with my makeup during the day, that's not going to cause, like, my consistency to crease or my makeup to like melt off like see instantly that's just absorbed it leaves the skin so soft and silky it's not heavy it's not sticky it's not greasy and I feel like it has definitely helped smooth my under eye areas it gives me lots of hydration but without making me feel like I'm wearing a heavy eye cream if that makes sense like it's just it's a beautiful, beautiful product. I love it. Um, my friend Ruby, um, she's been raving about this eye cream for like years and years now. And I was always really curious because her skin is like, oh, Ruby Galani. Like, I'm sure that you guys know who she is. Her skin is perfection. Like, I could stare at her skin all day. It's just so perfect. And um, she's gone through so many jars of this, swears by it. Now I understand exactly what she means because it's just so easy. It's so effective. It's so beautiful on the skin and it's so beautiful under makeup really 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 enjoying this one all right next up i have a foundation favorite this foundation you guys i take this very seriously and i know that you all take this very seriously also i actually think this is my new best of the best like i think i like this even more than double wear by estee lauder i know I know! How insane is that? Like, I never thought that there would be a day when there was a foundation that I liked more than Double Wear, but I honestly, I'm so shook by this one. I can't, like, it's changed my life since I first tested it, and yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> and the foundation that I'm talking about is the NARS Soft Matte Foundation. <gasps> wow! You guys, so if you haven't seen, like I obviously did a full first impressions, wear test, like in-depth review of this one. I will link it um, on the screen if you're interested in watching it. The thinnest formula of a foundation, like literally ever. You cannot feel this on the skin. It is like you are not wearing makeup, but it is so full coverage and it's the most beautiful satin matte, like glorious, like perfecting, smoothing finish on the skin transfer proof budge proof keeps my skin so insanely matte during the day like everything just everything about this is absolute perfection i can wear this on my skin and my skin literally looks perfect from the minute that i apply it 
until the end of the day. I get compliments from everybody on my skin when I wear this. Like not only from you guys, you guys lately have been like, what foundation are you wearing? Like your skin looks so good. Um, I've been getting amazing compliments from you guys. So thank you so much. But also from people that I'm seeing, you know, in my day to day life, everyone's like, uh, Nikia, that foundation. Oh, I'm, I'm truly lost for words, honestly. Like I, I don't know how else to describe this other than to get you to go and watch the full review that I did on it. It's honestly a game changer. I'm so glad that I finally tried it. When I originally purchased this, I had to, like I remember I got it from like a seller on eBay that was like located in the UK or something. Very, very difficult for me to get because it's not available here in Australia yet. Um, I'm hoping that it will be soon. Here in Australia, like we get launches, honestly. <laughs> sometimes 12 months after you guys in like America or you guys in the UK. It's really, really frustrating. <laughs> but yeah, I'm hoping it's for sale here soon. I'll pop some links down below. You know, if you're from Australia and you're wanting to get your hands on this, there are ways to get it. You just got to buy it from overseas. But literally game changing. I'm obsessed. I cannot stop using it. Um, and I honestly do think that it's better than the Estee Lauder Double Wear just because it's so lightweight on the skin. Like I feel like they both you know, last the same and they look as perfect the same, but this one, you just, you feel like you're not wearing any foundation at all, except it's still really full coverage. I love it. All right, next up I have a mascara combo and I am actually wearing it on my lashes today. You guys know that I have the worst natural lashes. They're short, they're straight, like they're really nearly impossible to get them to hold a curl. Like they're kind of, they're hard work. It's very hard to find a product that makes them happy, that actually keeps them like looking long, keeps them looking amazing. But this little combo from Longcomb, I have found it life changing and I've been using it every single day. And that's all that I have on my lashes today now. Like I'm not actually wearing any falsies. I'm not wearing any other kind of mascara. It's just these two products. So first up, it's actually a lash primer from Longcomb. It comes in like this little white tube and it is a white sort of like, you know, mascara priming formula. I love, love, love this. So it's called the Longcomb Sills Booster XL. So basically what you do is you curl your lashes and then you put this, like I usually just put this right on the tips. I don't actually put this over the part where I've curled. Put it right on the tips and it makes my lashes look so much longer, so much thicker. I have tried heaps of these mascara primers in the past, but I've never really liked them. They've always made my lashes like super clumped together and really spidery and just... There's not many primers out there that actually still look feathery after you then apply a mascara, but this one I really, really like. And I've tried it with a bunch of different mascaras. You don't have to only use it with the Lancome mascara. It does work with lots of other ones as well. But then I go in with the Lancome Hypnos in the waterproof formula. Now, unfortunately, this mascara does have a downside. The little like ring, you know, of the top of the tube when you pull the mascara out, in my opinion, just does not scrape off enough mascara. So unfortunately, I do have to spend a minute, you know, scraping off all the excess because otherwise for me, because I don't have naturally curled lashes, putting, I mean, if you've got naturally curled lashes, I don't think that you'd find it too much of a problem, but putting that amount of mascara onto my lashes all in one hit, it just makes them droop down. So what I do is I really carefully, I just scrape it all off and then I just go over top of the primer just with one coat of mascara, and this is what I get. Like, it just makes my lashes look so long. It really, really elongates them. It really, really thickens them up, and it holds the curl all day as well. A lot of the time when I use products like this, you know, they'll look cute for like 10 minutes, and then I'll look in the mirror, and they're like, ooh, like they're all sad, and they're, you know, back to being straight and back to being not really visible anymore again. Um, just this little combo I've been really, really enjoying. Like I said, I've been doing it daily. Um, I have spoken about these products before in the past, but then I sort of stopped using them for a little while and I feel like we've just, we've refound each other, we've rediscovered each other and I've been really, really enjoying like the natural lash look lately. I do still really, really love that Benefit Magnet Mascara that came out. I think that came out about six months ago as well, but I can't find it. Can someone please remind me to repurchase it? I keep forgetting to repurchase it. And then every day when I go to do my makeup, I'm like, oh, the, the Magnet Mascara, I don't have it. I forgot, I need to buy it. And then the cycle repeats. <laughs> And then lastly for the hits this month, I have this little liquid lipstick here from Revlon. So this is the Colorstay Satin Ink. This is the shade Eyes On You. It does come in a lot of different shades, but you guys, this formula is next level. 
It is definitely like satin ink is the best way to describe it. It's so soft and lightweight on the lips. It's kind of like a satin matte kind of a finish, but it's a real ink. So it is really, really long lasting, but without the tightness and without the dryness that normally comes with a liquid lipstick, I really just, I hate liquid lipsticks that feel dry. They feel like your lips are going to crack and you get that horrendous like line of product. Like it's for lack of a better word, like lipstick gunk around the inside of your lips. It looks hideous. It feels hideous. And so lightweight liquid lipsticks that just feel like you're wearing a lip balm, but are just like 10 out of 10 on the color. Yes, that is what I need in my life. Um, also, what else I really, I mean, the packaging of this is beautiful as well. Like look how like luxe and sleek and it's a really, really nice packaging. But the actual applicator of this is a really, really nice one. So it's slightly curved and it's also pointed and it just makes it really, really easy to get like the perfect Cupid's bow. I don't need a lip liner when I wear it. It doesn't bleed and it just feels soft as anything on my lips. Like just a really, really beautiful formula. I want to collect the rest of the colors, like the color range in this looks gorgeous. There's lots of really nice reds and vibrant colors and some pretty nudes as well. Obsessed, obsessed with the formula, obsessed with the packaging, obsessed with the color. Everything about this is a win for me. All right, so those were all of the hits. Those were all of the loves and the product favorites for the month. So we're moving into the shit. So these are the products that, in my opinion, are not worth the hype, are not worth the money. And I just don't really recommend you wasting your time and your money on. First up, and I may offend some people here. I don't know, because this product was so hyped up. I've been so excited to try it. I've been so like almost nervous to be like, yes, I want to see these results. I want to see how amazing this is. The Milk Kush Mascara. I cannot fathom for the life of me why this is so popular. Can someone explain it? Is there, is there somebody watching this that can explain to me exactly why you love this mascara so much? Like this has received so much hype online. Everybody was raving on about it. There's all these like news articles about it and stuff. This literally does absolutely nothing at all for my lashes. It doesn't thicken them. It doesn't lengthen them. It's clumpy. It kind of just all joins together. It makes my lashes droop. It's a really sticky kind of formula, so it's not comfortable to wear. So like when I blink, like my eyes kind of stick together and it transfers and flakes everywhere. Like I don't, did I get like a bad bottle or something? Like should I buy another one and like test it out again? Like maybe this is a bad one. I just... I, I don't understand the hype. I don't understand the craze. I think you are much better off spending a couple of dollars on the Essence Lash Paradise Mascara rather than investing money in this because it really, it doesn't do anything at all. The wand is also quite large. Like if you look at the size of my eyes in comparison to this wand, yeah, it pretty much ends up everywhere when you apply it. One thing that I will say is it is really, really nice. Like the packaging is really beautiful. It's really heavy. It feels really luxe. Um, and it's a nice dry formula, which I do like in a mascara. But can someone help me out with this one? I just don't understand the hype and I just don't understand the craze. Like it does nothing for me. It honestly does nothing. So yeah, definitely do not recommend this one. Next up. Oh, and I'm really, really sad about this. And this could be specifically because I don't have really, really dry skin, but the Tarcha Silk Powder. So this is a finishing powder that's meant to give you really, really flawless, poreless, amazing skin. I have tried this with many, many different primers and many, many different foundations and many, many different concealers for that matter. And every time I use it, I just end up with like almost this really bizarre, crepey looking texture on my skin. I do think that the packaging of this one's really like, it's quite different. I haven't really seen it before. Like the powder sort of spills out um, of this little purple thing in the center and then you can swirl your brush around in there and pick it up. Obviously being that it's Tarcha, it's very, 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 very expensive. And I just think that if you're gonna be, you know, investing that amount of money in a powder that's meant to perfect the skin, I at least wanna not be able to see it on the skin. Like it just leaves texture and kind of, you know, you know how your under eye area can go really crepey sometimes? You can get like this really bizarre like texture on top of the surface and you can see products on top of the surface. I'm sure if you've ever had like dehydrated under eyes, you'll know what I'm talking about. This does that except to my whole face. Now, like I said, it could be because I have an oily skin type. I do think this one is specifically more targeted towards those of you with a dry skin type that don't really need to necessarily set their makeup down too much, that just want like a very light kind of dust of powder. Um, but yeah, for me, 
She's a no-go. Um, I love Tatcha. I love so many of their products. I think that you're much better off investing in the water cream or the silk cream rather than investing your money in this. And then last but not least for the shiz is this little thing here. So Fenty released this like little clip on. Oh my God. I always do that when I open it and I end up with it underneath my nails. It's like literally like a clip on lip gloss. Are we doing this again? I remember doing this back in the early 90s when I was young, but I didn't realize we were doing this again. <laughs> For me, this is just like such a strange gimmicky kind of product. Um, not only, I mean, probably it's handy like to clip on into your handbag. Like if you've got a big handbag that doesn't have compartments, it would make it easier to find. But it's not just that. This is meant to be like their gloss bomb formula in, you know, a pan, in a pressed kind of a version. Um, it just ends up everywhere. As soon as you put your finger in there, it like literally melts, like pretty much on contact. It gets all underneath your nails. You can't like carefully put it on. There's no brush attachment or anything. It is just so, 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 so messy. I love the Fenty Gloss Bomb formula. I love the universal color of this, but you might as well honestly buy the normal one with the doe foot applicator. Be done with it. That's so quick and easy to apply. This to me is just I don't know, it's it's gimmicky and it's messy and I really wouldn't recommend. So there you go, guys. Those were all of my loves and hates, my favorites and disappointments for the month of April. I hope that you guys maybe learned something new. Did you see a product in here that you hadn't heard of, that you were curious about? Let me know and also let me know, have you tried any of these? Did you love them? Did you hate them? I really, like I said, I really wanna know, is there anyone watching this that loves this? I need to know and I need to know how you use it and do you think that I have like a dud bottle? because I'm like, I'm literally blown away by this. But I love you guys heaps. I hope that you really enjoyed today's video. Give it a thumbs up if you did, and I will catch you all in my next one. Bye.